the Joe Rogan experience. When people talk about issues in this country, there's uh, there's a giant there's a giant divide with with one thing in particular, and that is mass shootings, uh, mass shootings and gun control. There's a, a giant divide between people that are Second Amendment advocates and people that want to round up all the assault weapons and take away all the guns, and they think the guns are the problem. When you see this pretty disturbing increase in mass shootings in this country mm -hmm. what is what is your take on it and what do you think could be done well it's awful um they're terrorist attacks and and i think i think it's safer to call them that uh the the in whether depending on how you define a mass shooting um and how you define you know, when we look at murder statistics we're actually at a very very low point in our history i mean look at the early 90s it was, it was vastly more murders by gun uh, than we have now. Uh, just statistically speaking, what's what's that because of? Does it, do they know? Uh, well, there was a massive kind of war on crime. I think in the '90s, uh, increase in, in in police. You know, you had the, the, some of the crime bills that went through, which are obviously the source of a lot of debate right now in the Democrat primary. And uh, yeah, it was just it was just there was a there was a, an approach to fix that. Okay, you know, tackling gang violence, tackling all of these things. And uh, we we live in a much even though you wouldn't think so because of these kind of theatrical, again, they're, they're terrorist attacks. I don't know what else to call them uh, right. because, because the person doing it is trying to commit terror. Right. And, uh, you know, for different reasons, of course, but, but, or at least they attach themselves to some kind of reason. But in the end, they're, they're angry at something and they're, 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 just, they're probably been, you know, probably been taking some kind of psychotropic drugs over time. And they've gotten to this point and they'll attach themselves to whatever reason they need to, to do this. And it's awful. Um, so, you know, how do you fix that? Um, we have to understand the problem. We have to diagnose it. And, um, and then we got to, and I think we have to be realistic about what the solutions really are and what our ability to influence those outcomes really is. And that's, a, that's an emotional conversation for people. Uh, you know, we've, we've been dealing with it for the last few weeks, of course. I mean, it's, it's, it's front and center um, in the debate. And so, but we got to have it. What can be done? Yeah. Um, well, the, the, so obviously the reaction by many is to go after the tool, right? To go after the guns. Um, I don't think that's the right approach. It's not, it's not, again, it's not clear that that would actually solve the problem. There's, there's, two, there's two main requirements when you're, you're looking at a, an approach to gun control. It's like, does it infringe on law-abiding citizens' rights? Number one, what's the answer to that? And two, is it going to actually affect the outcome that we're trying to affect? Is it going to feel good or is it going to do good? Okay. And, and I think the vast majority of proposals um, fail both of those standards. They, they definitely infringe on law-abiding citizens' rights, and they probably wouldn't even solve the problem. You know, look at example is assault rifles. Or it's not, well, ARs. Okay. They're called assault rifles. They're really, the reason they're an AR is because they're called Armalite. That's a brand. Um, assault rifle is not a, is not a real thing. It's not a real definition. And, um, but what if you banned them? Well, rifles are responsible for less than 3% of all gun deaths, about 2.66% of all gun deaths. Okay, hammers and knives, I think, are, are, are responsible for far more deaths. Um, Is that so, true? Uh, yes. Hammers and knives are responsible yep. for more deaths than rifles? Got statistics. Including ARs. My bag. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. R rifles account for 2.66% for of gun deaths. How many folks are deaths. killing people with hammers? Well, I mean, it's a good weapon, I guess. <laughs> I feel For real obvious good reasons. if somebody has a hammer. If all you have is a well, hammer. Well, but yeah, if you have a gun, yeah, you're yeah, doing pretty I mean, well. Even well, if you don't have a gun, I yeah. feel like I could stop a hammer. Yeah, but you're a pretty Can't good fighter. do a goddamn most, most thing aren't. about an AR. Well, that's not true. I can take away your AR if you're... For how, you know, how close with, do you have to be to do that? I, I just got to reach it. It's yeah. very easy to take away an AR. Yeah? Yeah. How easy? I, I just she need. I just need to get a hand on the barrel. You should give and out I, I, one, AR one, takeaway whoever, classes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I've taken those classes. That's yeah. why I know it's so easy. It, whoever controls the barrel of any gun controls the gun. Right. People don't quite realize that. They think if they're gripping it, then they control the gun. That's not true. Right. Um, we can. We we're can in the we weeds should, now, though. Yeah, right? yeah we're getting yeah. the weeds. We can demonstrate that. Yeah. Afterwards, so I have a <laughs> flamethrower. Maybe you can grab that. Yeah, no rifles in here. Is that what that I was? That's Elon Musk. I wasn't sure thrower. what that was. Are oh, you going to take a picture with that later? Okay. Can I? <laughs> can I actually use it though? Yeah, we can turn it on as long as you don't cook the ceiling. Okay, but I can yeah. cook anything else. Yeah, you'll be the only one who's ever uh, <laughs> turned it on here, other than Elon. 
It doesn't um, have to be in the room. But, yeah, it know. does though. <laughs> okay, picture. Well, obviously, you do it in the room. Um, so, have you thought about this? I mean, if you if you had a magic wand mm-hmm. and they said, "Hey, Dan Crenshaw, what can you do to f- solve this mass gun violence? What can you do to solve these mass shootings?" Yeah, I, I mean, you have, you have to target the source of them, and it, it's, it's just not an easy conversation. Right, and so this. Let's also think about where these things started. They get, we're talking about the theatrical mass shootings. There's a lot of statistics out there. They'll say we have hundreds of them, you know, which include four or more deaths. But these are usually gang violence. So gang violence is it's a, it's in a category, right? Well, there's and, two. I believe there was 279 mass shootings so far this year, and some of them they do include gang violence. Right. I think it's it's two or more. Is that what it's deemed mass shootings? Yeah, uh, it might be more. It which is so people. fucking weird that we have a statistic. Well, that doesn't count. It's only. It's yeah. Only, yeah. Well, you, I mean, you got to draw the line somewhere, and you got to you got to be able right. to analyze. If you're going to analyze it, you you have to have to look into that. But the these the I think the the, kind of the, the dramatized shootings that these right. that these guys are doing. It, it all started with Columbine, and it's become mm-hmm. this sort of copycat crime that has occurred over time. And it, like we didn't have this before that. And that, and I think that's interesting. And I think it's something to take note of. Um, and it. And it's not clear what you do about that. Um, you you have to you know, have to look for signs uh, of people before they do it. And uh, so one bill that I'm on, which is which is I've taken a lot of fire for because the people are just I think misunderstand what it actually is, is is the TAPS Act, which is the Threat Assessment uh, Prevention and Safety Act. All this does is give local law enforcement the ability to apply for grants to get training and and behavioral threat assessment training and data analytical tools to identify these threats beforehand. And people that are opposed to it, they look at it like red flag laws, they, right? They, they combine those two quite a bit, yeah. and that's just, that's just not, it's not true. I mean, the, the TAPS Act doesn't actually have anything to do with guns. And red flag laws, depending on how they're implemented, could take someone who looks like they're erratic or who has a penchant for violence, and they yeah. would say, you do not have access to guns. Right. In theory, that would, that would be how they work. And um, they, they would fill a gap, I think. And it depends on the state. Some states have all the ability they need to see threatening behavior and then arrest that person. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it depends on criminal law within that state. So I, I, theoretically, a red flag law would, would fill, fill that gap. The concern with red flag laws, obviously, is, is there really due process? A lot of people hear that and they're like, okay, that means my neighbor can tell on me and they're going right. to have my guns the next morning. Well, yeah, I mean, if that's how the law was written, then, yeah, you better be against that because that's a terrible law. Right. Um, and, and, and to be fair to a lot of the people who, who don't like red flag laws, they see how these are written in a lot of states. I think California has one. And, uh, and they see how those are written and they say, this doesn't protect due process. How can we possibly be for this? Um, now, on the other hand, there hasn't been any cases where there's, there's been some obvious abuse of that law either. So, um, you know, I've encouraged the conversation. I think the conversation has to happen at the state level because every state has different criminal law. And that's where criminal law happens. It's, it, it's a, it does not happen at the federal level. The only other controversial uh, approach that I've heard is uh, putting armed police or soldiers at schools, mm-hmm. which is like that. That seems incredibly disturbing to me. That, oh, that you I have to have people. Look, I'm not opposed to it, but it's disturbing to me that you would have to have someone standing by, yeah. ready for violence. Well, we have guards everywhere. Mm-hmm. Why not our schools? Which um, because we've never had them before, and it's yeah. sort of signaling that we've reached this point of impasse where we have to do something about it, and we're not doing anything to prevent these things from happening. What we're doing is protecting the people that are going to be there when these things happen. Yeah, I, I think inner city schools have long had police presence there, so it, it's not. It's not. I don't think it's totally new. Um, the idea, and I think we could rapidly get used to it. Uh, there's a good argument to be made that gun free zones are are the first thing that are attacked, mm-hmm. too. So I mean, you know, it's a counterintuitive response yes. to this, but it's it's true. If if I'm going to commit a terrible act, I would of course you're going to go to the place where you know nobody is carrying. Yeah, you're not going to a gun show, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, unless you're just. Just want to really, die. yeah, you're really looking for a fight. Yeah. Um, but uh, th- that's that's there's some truth to that, and it's it's just hard. It's so hard for people to have this conversation because yeah. it's so emotional. And there's a cultural fissure here too. There's there's some people don't understand some people who like guns, right? And there's there's a cultural divide there. Yeah. And uh, I just don't like people who like guns. I've, you know, that's we have to admit that's true. Well, they have this idea of guns 
that guns bring violence and violent people want guns and that that's just not true and one of the things that people like to gloss over is how many people have defended their life and defended the lives of their loved ones with guns in this country every year it happens all the time i've got a whole list of yeah. stats and, yeah. and, and examples that i I'm could sure read i could read to you well, right now unfortunately one of the things that gets brought up during gun violence statistics and talk about how many people die from firearms every year in this country there are also talking about people who have defending their lives and defending the lives of their loved ones. People get their houses broken into all the time by armed criminals, and they shoot those people, and they, they live to see another day, and that person dies, and that is the whole reason why people don't want to get rid of guns. Right, and I want to bring something up along those lines. So it's far more likely in countries like Great Britain that you'll get your house broken into while you are there, far more likely than in the United States. Like by, by, by a good order of magnitude, actually. So that, that, why is that? Right? Because they know that there is no gun in that house. Right. And you do that in Texas, you, there's a good chance there's a gun in that it's house. Probably 100%. Uh, yeah, even the liberals, like, they're like, oh, they get no, mad we, at yeah, you if we, you don't have a gun. Right. right. Like, hey, take one of mine. Yeah. What the fuck are <laughs> you doing without a gun? <laughs> so, so that's a point, uh, an interesting point. The, yeah. the, other, the other good statistical analysis to do is, okay, like, when there's high amount of concealed carry, what does that do to crime rates? And, and the correlation is there's less crime. Yes. Okay, now, now it's not fair to say that's a causation. That would, be, that would be intellectually dishonest. But it's an important correlation to know. It's also important to note, okay, per capita, places like Switzerland and Israel have far, far more gun ownership than we do. People don't realize that. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. Switzerland? I, I wouldn't come in here and lie to you. I, I know, but I mean, I'm <laughs> stunned. It's a rhetorical yeah. question. Well, it, well, it's, it's because of the... Now, now somebody would counter argue that, say, no, those are, those are government weapons issued to people. Yeah, fine, but they still are with the people. Mm. Like, the people have the guns, okay, and they're at a, at a rate higher than the United States. thought they were and neutral like, over there. Yeah, yeah, but they are, that's how they stay <laughs> neutral. <laughs> so, uh, they have almost no crime, almost no crime. Israel, too, almost no crime, um, except for the obvious issues that Israel has in general with the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. But as a, as a criminal act, like, they have very little crimes. Like, this is... Interesting. So you combine that with what we know about concealed carry data here in the United States, you know, how do you solve this problem? The other thing to think about is to, uh, the, the vast majority, over 50% of all gun crime, it happens in like 2% of all counties. So it's highly concentrated. You can, you can, so as we look to solve this problem, like we, we do have to really peel back some layers here. Like who is committing the crime? Where is it happening? Why is it happening? Um, you know, we can detect the tools, but it's just, it's so far from self-evident that that would work. Again, going back to ARs, they're responsible for less than 3% of gun deaths. And also, let's say you banned them. Are you actually stopping 3% of gun deaths? No. Because why don't they just use another gun? Why don't they use a different weapon? Why don't they use a truck? Like they can use, yeah. if they want to kill, they can kill. The, the, the horror that we're seeing is that they like to kill this way. And maybe that's like, why is that? And again, I, I go back to Columbine. It all started with that. And that's interesting. We should look at that and like what is driving people to like that? Well, I think there are a lot of people. I mean, if you look at mass shootings, a lot of these people, when you read their description, they're very disenfranchised. They're very angry. And when you're disenfranchised and very angry, there's like an archetype, right? There's a, an image that you have in your mind of shooting all these people yep. that wronged you. I mean, this is... Uh, goes back to our victimhood conversation. Sure, yeah. And blame somebody else. Well, and then the real conversation is how many of these people are on psychotropic drugs? And what are those, what are those drugs? And what are the effects that those drugs have on people? Well, when you look at the numbers, it's fucking stunning. Whether it's anti-anxiety medications or SSRIs mm -hmm. or amphetamines or whether it's whatever they're on that alters the chemical frequency or the chemical the, the biological structure of your brain in terms of like what chemicals are in there serotonin dopamine what, the, the, these speeds that so many kids are on adderall and and various types of speed that stuff radically changes the way you look at the world yeah how many of those drugs contribute or are a factor in these mass killings. I don't know if correlation equals causation, but I do know the correlation is phenomenally high. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's in the high- Fatherless homes, things like yes, that. Things, sure. Let's, Abuse, let's start analyzing it. Bullying, Absolutely. incels, which is a new word. Involuntary celibates. Did you know about that? Huh. You didn't know about that? I taught uh, you about incels? 
you just did. Amazing. Look at that. Yeah, there's whole groups online on message boards that they can't believe they can't get laid. And they're just going, fuck. Involuntary. Yeah, they're just guys who can't get laid. Yeah, that's just a fancy word for losers. that. Well, let's not call them losers. That's what makes them crazy. If there's a game, (laughs) there's winners and losers. And that uh, high school football quarterback who's banging all the cheerleaders, that guy's a winner. It sucks. That yeah. that's true, <laughs> it's, but you know, so unfair. another yeah, it is unfair. You know, I'm, I'm hoping genetic engineering fixes all that in the future. But, uh, but you know, there's, what, yeah. this is what you're dealing with a lot of times is these these guys yeah. that got a really shitty roll of the dice, and that's there's no other way to describe it. They they got handed a terrible hand of cards, right? And some of them are pilled up and angry and abused, and they have access to guns. And then next thing you know. There's a mass shooting, right? And, and then you know, again, going back to the victim of conversation, they maybe they did were dealt a bad hand, but they also tell themselves the wrong story about why that is and who's to blame. And uh, it's it's that narrative just seeps within them, and it creates this. I mean, but you're absolutely right. It, I is when Bernie Sanders was on here. There was one thing I thought I agreed with him on, which is we have to look at the effects of these drugs and like really mm-hmm. what they are. Yeah. I don't see anything wrong with that. I think well, that's it's, true. Well, it's it's amazing how much blowback you get from that, and it's by people that want to look at the guns. They just want to say, no, no, no. Why are you talking about psychotropic drugs? It's a, the guns. No, I'm talking about the guns too. I mean, I don't necessarily think that really angry, volatile people that have criminal records should have guns. I think they shouldn't. Right. So the and, guns are. And we an already issue. outlaw that. Yes, we yeah. do, and we probably should you know have some understanding of who you are before we give you a gun the real question is what is that understanding and how do we go about doing that and how do we keep people from making these incredibly rigid rules i mean particularly regionally right if you have uh, states that decide to have incredibly rigid rules that preclude most people from having guns yeah I mean, that can yeah. be possible if they just devise their own tests and yeah. you're honest about your perspectives on things. And, and that's the fear, and, and it's an honest fear to yes. have. Uh, because Yeah, what is the limit? You know, if you're on psychotropic drugs, should you be barred from having weapons? Right. Of course not. Uh, you know, and, 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 and how, do you, how do you manage that? And you know, the way we do it now, again, you have to have committed a crime of some sort. So yeah. there's, there's other things, too. Uh, if you abuse medication, if you abuse... Uh, yeah, medication. Then I think you're also. I think in, according to federal law, like you're, you're you're barred from 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 owning that. You know that's in the system. Uh, I think dishonorable discharge from the military, things like that. So there's there's already a lot of standards that actually preclude you from from buying a weapon. And uh, there's a there's there would be a very vigorous debate on how you add more standards to that. And, dishonorable and, discharge keeps you from buying a weapon. That's what I've read. We could fact check that. But that's interesting. I didn't know that one. I thought you had to have a felony. Hmm. Maybe. Um, I mean, it makes sense. But it's there's no answers. I mean, this is the the thing that domestic I, abuse too. Sorry. I came up with from. Is there something, Jamie? Yeah. Well, yeah. A... Dishonorable discharge and NFA. What's an NFA firearm? Uh, NFA refers to the National Firearms Act, so oh. that's what banned like automatic weapons. Based on a general court martial conviction, a person who was convicted of a crime that is punishable by imprisonment for uh, more than one year, including dishonorable discharge, is prohibited. Okay, from so pre- that's where prohib- we're from. Yes, okay, that's what it is. So it is true. So if you're imprisoned, not just a dishonorable. Yeah, yeah, discharge, it, was, it yeah. would be. It would, there's a lot of people dishonorably discharged that probably. Not, viol- not not violently. You know, they're not violent offenders. By What's disturbing, talking to you, talking to Bernie, talking to Tulsi, talking to everybody, is nobody has a solution. I mean, well, all the brightest minds that are thinking about this all the time, no one has one thing that makes sense. Well, this gets to a very deep question about what are cap- – and I think I briefly touched on this before. Like, why does government exist and what are we capable of solving and what needs to be solved by ourselves? You know, there are there – are, and, and, and what is just inherent to human nature and it's evil and we hate it and we don't want it to be there, but it is. And, 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 and is, it, is it appropriate for us to scream to our politicians and say, save us? And sometimes it is. Sometimes we can solve it. We should try. But we have to, we have to do it with some kind of constrained vision, as Thomas Sowell would put it, about what is possible. And then let's be reasonable about what is possible and, 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 and hit those two categories I said. Are we infringing on the rights of everyone uh, for the sake of doing this, and second, is it going to actually solve the problem? And those are those are very important questions. And, and if we don't frame the debate within those, I think we're 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 not doing 
we're not doing justice to the to the problem itself. True, but again, no one seems to have any logical course, any logical clear path. Like this is how we're going to reduce gun violence. This is how we're going to stop mass shootings. I mean, other than arming all these public places. I, mean, I was in Rome recently, and uh, when you go there, it's fucking stunning. There's military vehicles, guys with guns just strapped, ready hmm. to rock, just standing by yeah. all over the place. And, and I was didn't like, used to be that way. No, it didn't. And I was like, wow, this is uh, very uh, – it's – you know, you're trying to enjoy yourself when you're on vacation. You're checking all these ancient buildings. And then you're like, oh, look, fucking guns, military, tank. Look at that. You know? Yeah. And it's – I wish it wasn't that way. Yeah. You we know, all do. And, and – uh, but again, like, you know, you're right. We don't – we don't – we haven't come up with perfect solutions. We have some ideas that I think would mitigate these threats. And we've, and we've discussed those at length. Um, yeah, but none of them seem tangible. Everything seems like just talk. No, uh, well, the TAPS Act that I talked about, I think, is perfectly tangible. Again, it's not a; it won't solve everything, mm -hmm. but it mitigates something. Uh, I think armed security at schools, I think, certainly mitigates things as far as school safety goes. So, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's just talk. I think those are tangible things, and I, and I think they're perfectly reasonable. Um, you know, it's people, when you, people just so, are so reluctant to think that we need armed guards at school, and I understand it. I'm thinking about it myself. I'm like, ugh. Is that what, really what it's going to take? Is armed guards at school? I went to high school in Bogota, Colombia, so we had armed like a lot of armed guards yeah, at our right. school. Yeah, that's right. You went. You, went to, you <laughs> so grew up it's, over. It's, your dad was a banker. To me at all. Is that what it was? Uh, no, an oil no, business. No, oil. Oil. He's oil a petroleum business. engineer. Yeah. Yeah. So we moved. My my life growing up was between Houston and overseas, Fuck. back and forth. That yeah. had to be very bizarre. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, I I don't regret a minute of it. It can be hard at times. Um, moving How around a lot. How good is your Spanish? It used to be better. It's not bad. I'll, I'll do an interview in Spanish, so it's obviously oh, really? it's not bad by any means, but it's not great. So you can go into a taqueria and hang. Oh, I totally hang. <laughs> yeah, I speak I speak really well conversational Spanish. It, my Spanish it's harder when I'm talking complex policy issues because mm. I didn't learn that kind of Spanish. Right, right, right. So, but yeah, I'm mean, pretty good. 